So there's no big super secret or easy button or magic wand that we can use to increase our sales. But I can promise you if you're doing your job right and if you're making people feel seen and you're prepared and you come from a place of service, that magic does happen. You get the magic wand and the easy button and the super secret. So welcome to the Creative Shop Talk podcast. Today, we're going to dive in and talk about how to effortlessly and easily increase sales after workshops, after events, or when we have a group of people who have gathered at our shop or our studio, and how we can do this with ease and comfort and make it make it fun. It's actually fun. So welcome to the podcast. Let's dive in, grab your notebook, grab a pen, get listening. This is one that you might even want to share with your team. So let's go. Running a retail business doesn't have to be so hard. Welcome to the Creative Shop Talk podcast, the go-to podcast for creative shop owners, studio owners, and independent retailers. I'm your host, Wendy Batten, retail business coach and mentor. Each week, I'll share simple, proven business strategies, inspiring stories from fellow retailers, and advice from industry experts. Together, we're going to work to find the success you want from your retail business with more profits in your till and a little more joy in your life. Okay, friends, today I'm going to share three ways that we can easily, easily make sales and how we can make sales without feeling slimy, icky or yucky, especially and in particularly after workshops. So I'm going to be doing actually a couple of podcast episodes. I don't know how many, I think we're going to do three or four episodes specifically around getting comfortable about making sales. So we've already done lots of podcasts about sales, but I would like to remind you that we did on episode number 27, way back, we did an episode with Nikki Roush and she talks about getting comfortable making sales and coming from a place of service. And that is the root. That is the root and the key to being comfortable with increasing your sales. So even if you're already comfortable making sales and doing sales with your customers, I want you to listen into this podcast because we're going to be sharing some specific ways and some mindset shifts maybe and some ideas on how you can be really super comfortable and maybe increase that average order value after a workshop or after an event. And these have all been proven. They all work with so many of my retailers, so many of my creative shop owners, so many of my specialty retailers. And so here we go. Let's go. I'm going to share share with you. Sales doesn't have to be slimy. And we don't have to think of it that way. And it really does, if you come from the place of service, you really will see the return on your investment of your effort and your energy. So I always want to liken events and I always want to liken the group of people gathered in front of me, whether they're at an event or not, always think about them as guests in your shop. They're guests. They're just like as if you were having a dinner party. I have an entire workshop series that I (laughs) teach inside my retailers inner circle. And the root of all of that is treating your customers like a guest. They're coming to a dinner party. Ironically, I used to have a lot of dinner parties and then I ended up having a lot of workshops because it was hard to do both (laughs) for a long time. But, you know, having that mentality that the customers coming through the door are your guests right off the bat will will help you. It's all about how we make them feel, how we make people feel when they're at our workshops or when they're at our events. So I'm going to share the first thing right off, starting off. When people come into an event, one of the number one things we want to do is get them imagining and thinking about, you know, the ultimate goal, the things maybe that we could offer them after the workshop. So I do have a lot of listeners that have DIY and creative workshops. I also have a lot of retailers doing events by doing free demos or maybe flower arranging demonstration or clothing or fashion show kind of thing or a book signing or something along those lines. If you have a tasting or you have any kind of gathering of people, which honestly I am a huge fan of and I'm so happy that 
those are all returning right now. And again, you can go listen to episode number six uh, from the podcast, Creative Shop Shop Podcast number six. I talk about the reasons why free demos and events and that type of thing are really, really good for your business. And I'm so happy that we're doing, we're back to doing those again. But you can do it with anything, any kind of gathering that you have of people. If you have their attention for a product demonstration, If you have them at your shop for a DIY event, if they're doing a creative workshop with you, if they are sitting at a table or they're gathering together or they're at a retreat or whatever you're doing with people, having their attention and being able to go to that next level with them. So how do we take this gathering of people, you know, they're here for a flower arranging. How do we How do we sell? How do we level up? How do we get the confidence to just sort of increase the sales? You know, they didn't, maybe they paid for the event. Maybe they paid to come into that event. And what are the spinoffs we can get? This is our goal. This is, we're in business to make money. We're in business to sell products. We're in business to sell services. So our job, and if we think about it, and if we think about it in the right mindset. Our job is to serve them. So what better way to serve them than to offer them the other products that would help them or they might be interested in. So never feel bad about offering different things at your workshops. So my first tip is get them imagining what the next thing is. So what what is the next thing that we want to do or what are the alternatives or the extra things? So for example, when I would teach DIY workshops, paint workshops or creative workshops, while they're coming in and introducing themselves and we're getting settled, while my guests are gathering around the table, I always start off at the very beginning by saying, you know, what brought you here? Do you have a paint project in mind? And make them sort of think, yeah, I really want to paint my dresser, or I really want to paint my kitchen cabinet someday, or I'm really wanting to get comfortable learning how to do this thing. And that's the same with flower arranging, you know, let's go back to that or a clothing or fashion show, get them imagining, you know, when they're when you're showing the clothes, say, how would you wear? How would you wear? What what, what would you wear with these pants? Or what would you what kind of jewelry would you add to this shirt? What kind of jewelry do you like? You know, it's this it's this getting them to sort of place themselves in uh, in the next step, in the next thing. So we during my workshops, we would talk about, you know, I'd say, well, Mary, you know, you, you mentioned that you wanted to do a, your dresser. You know, have you thought about colors? You know, we want to like get them imagining. Yeah, you know what? You know, and how, yeah, maybe yellow. I was really thinking of yellow dresser and then encouraging them, letting them know that, you know, you're there for them. You're you're there to help them make the right next choice, right? The next thing that's, you know, happening. So we want them to be excited while they're sitting there thinking about, oh, I could buy some jewelry with that outfit that I'm doing. Or if I'm at a book signing and, you know, maybe the author has another book or you have a complimentary book, you know, something that would make sense. So, you know, get them thinking about all of their other books that, you know, might be interesting uh, for them. If you're doing a, uh, a tasting or if you're like, I'm thinking I have a retailer, you know, who does chocolates. If they're, if they're in, if you're in there and you're showing them how to make chocolates or they've paid to learn how to make chocolates or whatever we're doing, whatever type of demonstration that you might be doing, doing let's get them thinking about the next thing is there is there another workshop coming up or is there a complimentary product are there tools that would make this job easier that they sh- you know might want to consider these are the things we want to think about as we're seeding and we and we call that seeding and and making them think kind of future but that's so exciting for them it's exciting for me i love it when i go to stores and they, if i'm at a free demo or i'm at a paid workshop I love hearing and and imagining all the other things that I can do. And your clients will too. So our goal at this stage, our first tip, first tip for you is get them imagining themselves doing other things, painting that furniture or buying the tools for the, you know, for making it easy for them, buying the tools for the chocolates. Or if you're doing flower arranging, looking at the different types of of vases that they can buy, that type of thing. So the second one is what I just said, actually, make it easy for them. Make it super easy for them. So after my paint workshops, we always had um, very easy for them to buy a starter kit. 
So our starter kits, you know, we made it really super simple. No hoops to jump through. Here's everything that you need. We just did a workshop and you learned how to paint that dresser. And here's a starter kit with a brush and a can of paint. And we, you know, we always value add. We added uh, things like sandpaper and gloves. I don't know, all the little things, extra things. And, you know, total, no problem, no pressure. Just here it is. It's easy for you to grab it now get their attention while they're excited about it, right? We want to do that because it, it, it's just fair to them and fair to us, right? It's just a great sales, uh, just a great way to increase your sales after a workshop. Um, and they're excited. They go home happy. They just had this great workshop and now they've got the starter kit and they're eager and they're going to take action on it. I do think it's really important to not like to really make sure that they're comfortable with that. So for me, for those types of things, I always, always, always had a full refund um, process and, you know, full, totally refundable. I don't want to pressure sales anybody, never want anybody to feel pressure. Like you have to buy the starter kit tonight or you can never buy it again. To me, that's kind of icky. So I don't work that way. So here's the deal, you know, here's a great starter kit. I want you to be excited about it. If you get home and tomorrow you decide that, you know, whoa, what did I do? Come on back. It's like no hassle, right? We want to make it easy for them. And I will tell you in all of the years, all of the years that I did workshops and there was thousands of workshops of DIY workshops for me, I never had anybody ever come back with their package. I never, I think I've had a few, a few that would come back and exchange colors because they changed their mind from the yellow dresser to the purple one or whatever, but, or they got really excited on, on that night. And then bought the purple and then decided they wanted to go back to the yellow. That happened more often than not. But what I'm trying to say is if you are trying, if you have a book signing or you're again, back to the flower arranging or the clothing or whatever we're doing, whatever demonstration, whatever gathering, whatever event you have going on, we just want to make it easy for them. Have a special bundle, have something special there for them that makes sense to the gathering, right? We want to make it a value add too. So, you know, come from a place of service when we're doing that. Again, it doesn't have to necessarily be a starter kit. It could be, hey, you know, now that you've learned to do the flower arranging, I'd love to show you a, an easy way to keep the flowers together using this twine. I know nothing about flower arranging. I have no idea why I'm talking about flower arranging, but uh, I just, I have a client who does demonstrations with her vintage, uh, with her florals and in vintage containers. So I'm making it sound like I know what I'm talking about, but let's say, you know, uh, we have all the whole series of, um, I think they're called frogs, the flower frogs. <laughs> Again, I don't know why I keep talking about this, but you guys know what I mean. So you can go and show them all the different containers and vessels that they could possibly use instead of the one that you were demonstrating in. Um, if you were doing a fashion demonstration or an event around uh, something along those lines, you know, you could say, oh, we also have these beautiful accessories and you can have specials, especially if it's an event, if you have you know, an event. Again, specials are okay. I'm not a big, as you know, if you've been a long time listener, I'm not a huge proponent of discounting our products unless you have the margins built into discount, if that's already part of your strategy. Customers don't always need a sale to be enticed to buy. They need to be excited to buy. Um, so having a bundle or cross-promoting or just getting them excited about something or value adding. So today, if you buy, you know, tonight during this event or during this workshop, you know, we're throwing in this extra thing. We're doing this extra thing. We're giving you a personalized flower arranging <laughs> lesson or, you know, something along those lines. So value add is always where I like to come from, but really ultimately what's gonna make your customer feel really excited and really happy happy to be, you know, to be buying more and to doing more with whatever it is that you are teaching or talking about. Again, I keep talking about book signings or, you know, if you're doing a feature, featuring an artist or um, gallery, if you have a gallery and you're featuring a, you know, a, a personal, uh, an artist, an artist at your gallery, which I, Wendy cannot speak today, uh, having the artist there, the gallery owner there, and you're, you know, maybe that's part of the event, maybe tonight everything gets signed or the book gets signed or there's something extra you get a bookmark i don't know or you get a card a limited edition card you know and they that's that's if they if you buy a piece of art tonight you get 
a limited edition card. That's a value add. That kind of thing is really um, makes people feel good. That to me means more than 10% off. <laughs> it's like 10% off. You get 10% off tonight if you come. That works too, to an extent that might push the needle a little bit. It might encourage me to buy the starter kit. If I've just invested in a workshop, 10% off all my paint tonight, that's kind of a good deal. So that might be, you know, that is something you have to really know your customer. You have to really understand your market. And again, your margins are very important. So always understand, stop throwing around discounts. If you can't afford the margins on that, if you don't have it marked up, you can't mark it down. Anyway, whole other podcast on that. But I want to just remind you that having people feel good, again, back to this coming from a place of service, this is the easy button. If you just, if we're doing our job right and we've made people feel amazing at their workshop or the event or the whatever it is we're doing at the flower arranging class or the fashion show or the workshop or the studio tour that we're doing, whatever we're doing, if we've made them feel amazing, they're going to want to continue. They're going to want more. <laughs> they're going to want more from you. So make it easy. Have the specials and the bundles and everything ready to go. Plan ahead. This is why I said at the top of the podcast, be prepared, have things planned, and you can definitely reap the rewards for that. So the last tip, number three that I have is really just making sure that you are thinking about what's next for them. I will tell you from personal experience that I would have all these beautiful people around a workshop table, or I would have all these people at an event, or I would have all these people basically paying attention to me and I've just given them a great workshop and they're really excited. And what's next? They would ask me, when's the next workshop? I don't know. I don't have it planned yet. Uh, they would say, you know, oh, can I sign up for the next workshop? I don't know. I don't know when it is. I don't have it planned. It's not in the books. I don't know. So be super prepared and think about what's next. So I'm at the flower arranging class again, or I'm at this demo. It can be a free demo. It can be paid events. This is this go. This works for all of these things. Be prepared. I'm here. I'm you know getting. When is the next event? When is the next thing? Maybe next week we're going to be doing, or next month we're going to be teaching you how to style a, a, a tray with vintage items or, or maybe next week we have a different author or what is the next thing that you want them to come to that you want them to be excited about and if it's a paid event what can you do tonight today during this event while they're in the excitement mode what can you do either to have them pay tonight maybe maybe that is you know you, you bring a friend and you get a discount or you know, something along that lines, again, totally, you have to have that in your strategy and your marketing planning. But what's next for me? What's next for me? I'm so excited to be here at your event and your thing. And what's going on next week? Or what's going on next month? It might be as simple as you being prepared with a list of items that you can drop in their bag as they get as they leave in their goodie bags, or it might be a sign up, it might be a sign up, like you can sign up right now. What can you do to encourage that sale, that extra thing that they can buy right now, you can buy a ticket to the next flower arranging class, or the next bow making class or the next book signing, or the next testing tasting or the next whatever the next workshop the next studio tour whatever it is you're doing you can buy that now for you okay one extra tip so we have them imagining and thinking about things and what's next for that uh, or what we could make sure that they before they leave that they're excited about purchasing something we make it easy we make it really super simple by having packages and things available for them right there we already know we've already prepared and one thing i didn't mention is like being prepared what are the things that you want to show them and what are the if, if you're at a paint workshop you want to make sure that they understand here's a here's all our tools our beautiful brushes our our transfers, all of the things, you know, the extra things. Maybe we didn't talk about all of that during class, but we want to have that ready in our, either with our team, or we want to have that ready in our vocabulary, whatever. We want to be prepared to make it easy and to show them um, really good value tonight and what, what, what they could purchase tonight. Uh, again, coming from a place of service. And uh, what's next? That's our last thing. We want to make sure we're prepared with what's next. What are we going to do to capture that excitement and get them to sign up now and say yes now? Say yes, I love this. It's so much fun. I want to do it again. So what can we do to capture that? And the extra tip that I wanted to share is 
thinking about your events, if they're a timely thing, if it's a, you know, a, an evening workshop, or if it's a Saturday morning workshop, never ever rush anybody out, never make anybody feel like they have to go. And it sounds obvious, but I have experienced this with other retailers that I work with. And they've actually said, well, our staff rush people out or we close at nine. So they feel like they have to leave at nine. We want to make sure that if it's an evening event, and I know, I know you're tired. I know I've been there. I'm like, oh, in a way I want them to stay in a way I want them to go. You know, that tension <laughs> I want you to stay and browse and purchase, but I'm really tired. I also want you to go home because I got to clean up all this mess, but it is what it is. We never want to rush anybody out. So plan for people to stay late and feel comfortable purchasing. One of the things that works really well for depending on the event. And again, I know we're talking about studio owners and we're talking about demos and we're talking about different things. Um, there's something magic about telling people that they're having a private shopping time. So if it's an off hour time that you're doing whatever this said event is or the thing that you're doing, if you tell people during this event, you'll have time for private shopping. I don't know why that's a magic thing, but it makes people feel really special. So if you can work it into your event, if it's a workshop or a, a longer event, or if it's, again, something that you've gathered all these people, if there's time to let them browse, make sure you have the staff there, make sure you have an extra person always helps. So one person's doing the teaching. And then if I'm finished painting or I'm finished doing something or it's not quite my turn or whatever that might be, um, can I go browse the shop? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You go right ahead. Um, you know, that's what we want to have them feel because they feel special. It's a special moment because I've had people say to me, oh, is it is it OK if we shop while we're here? And again, they think they're there for just a workshop. But I mean, I, have a, I had a big store, I had a big store full of things. Um, absolutely. So be prepared for that um, and be prepared for that. And again, put yourself in your client's shoes. How does that make them feel? How does it make them feel being special around these types of events and different things? So just think about that. And I guess I just wanted to remind you always come from a place of service. And I want you to think about that you are not your customer. So even though, and I know we know this, we talk about it, we all we all kind of know this. I always like to bring this back up. You're not your customer. So just because, you know, you wouldn't buy four brushes after a paint workshop, maybe, uh, doesn't mean that they won't. I've had clients that would buy like the full thing, their first <laughs> workshop in, and they're all in. They're, and actually, that's actually kind of how I would be. <laughs> Once I commit to something, I'm like, I want to learn all the things. I'm going to buy all the products. So don't ever think, well, I don't want to show them the brushes because, you know, they just dropped a lot of money on this. And then they, you know, she's already picked up one brush and just, you know, be okay. Come from a place of service. Say, I just want to show you these other things that you may also like. They're going to, they're, they're grown ups. They're going to say no if they don't want to, or it's not in their budget. Don't have a preconceived notion that people have a budget in their head when they come into your shop. They don't. Most people don't. I mean, some people do, of course, but you know, it's not necessarily, it's not pushy sales to show me what else you have. So if I come in and I'm, I've come to a fashion show or I've come to a book signing or I've come to a flower arranging, I'm interested. I'm interested in what you have to say and what's available to me. So if you show me 12 vessels to flower arrange in, don't make an assumption that I'm only going to pick the one. I might have a giant guest house with 25 rooms that I need to furnish. You just don't know. I don't have a giant guest house with 25 rooms, just FYI. So I just wanted to remind you that you don't know where people are coming from. If you've been in retail a long time, if you've been doing creative workshops for a long time, you know what I'm saying is true and that we are not our customers and that these things really do matter. How you make people feel, that's what encourages the next sale. That's what encourages you know, that's what's going to effortlessly in increase your profits from workshops and your extra revenue. So I hope you found today's episode helpful. I want to encourage you to um, 
leave a review if you found it helpful. Let me know. I always like knowing what part of this, of these podcasts you do find helpful. I've had a lot of retailers lately telling me that they are sharing some of the podcasts with their staff and their team. So, hey, y'all, if you're listening and you're not the owner, I want you to encourage, I want to encourage you that if this would be helpful for your staff to come from the same mindset that I, you let them listen to it as well. I'd love, I'd love for you to share it around. Also, if you know any retailers, just one retailer would be super helpful to me if you would share the podcast. So normally on podcast apps, there's a share button and you can share it. Usually it's a click down and give it a share. And if you'd leave us a review, that would be so helpful to me. I would be so appreciative of that. We try, I try, we try. My team is here uh, listening and helping me with this as well too, to give you valuable advice and information with each podcast. So I hope you have a takeaway today. I hope you found it valuable worth your time, worth your attention, because I know both of those are in very limited supplies and this stage of our business is right. This time of the, in this time of life as well, it's been pretty hectic for so many of you. So I see you, I know how hard you're working and I, again, hope that this is helpful to you. So if you need any more support, you wanna find other resources or other things and you wanna find out more about my services and products and how I try to help retailers with their day-to-day, visit me over at wendybatten.com. All kinds of stuff over there, more resources, more blogs and freebies over there for you as well too, along with um, information about my retailers inner circle. Thank you so much for listening. I'm going to have some extra sales podcasts coming up. So watch for those. And I'm also going to link a few podcasts that might be really helpful to you in the show notes that that would kind of complement this podcast. So thanks for listening. We'll see you soon. Well, that's it for this week's episode of the Creative Shop Talk podcast. I'm so glad that you're here to join us this week, and I hope you found value in what we're sharing here. I want to remind you that our website has all of the show notes. You can find it at wendybatten.com slash podcast. Everything that you need to hear about today's podcast is there. Also an opportunity if you need to reach out to me. If I can support you in any way whatsoever, please feel free to reach out. Make sure you join our Rockstar Creatives Facebook group. We will continue the conversation over there weekly. So thanks for joining us. Please leave a review, subscribe if you can, and never miss an episode. We hope to see you back here again next week. Thanks, my friend. Have a great week.